And now we're going to continue with the robot, but don't forget, those are tools to help us. So the next presentation will be RoboPen. RoboPen presented by uh, uh, Levert Akar. Hello everybody, my name is Dr. Levent Ajar and I'm from Istanbul, Turkey. And I'm in the hip transplantation field about 10 years and I'm using mostly the FUE method. I will change it there. Okay, uh, once I start for the hip transplantation, I see many devices, we make a manual extractions and then we start to develop automated extraction devices. But uh, I think any time about doing making the incisions, why we don't have any automated handheld system which creates the incisions or which will support the linear motion to make the incisions. Because the same mentality was uh, done in 2005 and taking some movements from the hand and give it to the motor, but still all the control is in the human hand. Recipient side incision is a three-dimensional linear puncture or linear incision which accommodates the implantation process and determines the hair growth, the direction of the hair, angle and density and the distribution of the uh, planning of the operation. Aesthetically, it's very critical because it gives in the end exactly what you did at which uh, site you make the incisions and medically it's very critical because there are many types of blades and these blades have uh, very interesting uh, details, the grinding shapes, the material and uh, even the steel have different uh, thicknesses, is it a sapphire blade or needle or is it a custom cut blade, all of them have different grinding shapes and geometry and this is very useful for different uh, types. Uh, of the scalp and for different type of uh, skin uh, patients. Difficulties on incisions. There are many difficulties which we have to follow uh, simultaneously. I just write some of them. The decision for the right plate, the linear motion. We have to use power for make the incisions and we have to get the correct stroke to get in the correct depth penetration force the speed is very important because we go in a speed and it is, this is like 25 millimeter per second we go in and 75 millimeter per second we go out. And the angle direction is very uh, important. We have to organize the tilt in some patients if you don't have a, a good donor area to overlap the hair grow. Intersection rates is very important. And bleeding control, yes, bleeding control is still a big problem in making the incisions. And there is no any solution for that at the moment. It's very interesting. It's, it's uh, important because you cannot see your field where you work so precisely and you have to clean it any time with your assistant. Counting is also difficult because you have, you need an assistant for count exactly the incisions time management and fatigue uh, at the time. So instruments that we, uh, what we are using are custom cut plates, hypodermic needles, sapphire blades are very popular, miniature blades from some companies are very popular and we have to hold these blades with holders. So I decided to create a new medical device four years ago which is work for the recipient side creation only. The mentality comes from the same. If we have a manual extraction and if we get automation for the extraction on the donor area, why we don't have any automated handheld system which can help us to create the incisions? The RoboPen is produced in order to give the operator the chance to use the previous surgical habits and to create better and more precise incisions. Functions of the RoboPen is it has a precise linear motion, adjustable penetration force. This is very important. This is what we are using in normal. 
in our daily routine in operations. If the patient has a different skin type, if the elasticity is too high, we have to penetrate with a higher uh, penetration force power. For example, for Caucasian, Asian, and African, we can select in RoboPen uh, the power. The stroke control is very important because we give the linear motion from the hand to the robot, uh, to the handheld device. We give the power what we have to use from the hand also to the device, which is a two critical parts, and then we have more control, we have more time, and uh, more time for the aesthetic in general to create the incisions. Supports all type of blades which is on the market, needles, custom cut blades, persona blades, and the CFI blades, it can attach it on the tip of the device easily. And there is a short adaptation period. Here is a screen of the robot pen. Here we can see, for example, this means two lines means medium thickness. If it's three line, you can know you have to change this for Afro-American type skins because you will need more penetration force. And this is single blade and this is the depth of the blade. These are the angle, you can change the angle. This is the counter, you, you don't need to assist them to count it because it has a very precise counter sensor. Linear motion. The linear up and down motion and the penetration force is transferred to the, from human hand to the RoboPen medical device. It means this will support the physician for more comfortable and precise receive inside creation. At the same time, linear axis supports parallel incisions because we don't change the axis with the device, it's not possible, but it's hand, with hand it's easy to change the axis. If you change the patient's head position, you can lose easily the control and this will happen to damage the incisions under the skin and this will happen to vascular damage. Uniform depth, it's mean the harmony between the penetration force and stroke. Here we can see, for example, if you lose the control and if you have to use too much penetration force, you can see you can easily come to the blood uh, vessel circulation and you can damage this because the skin is elastic. Here you can see an optimal incision, penetration force, and the stroke is here optimal. And here you can see a tired situation. If you get tired after 3,000 incisions, if you change the position, it's very normal that you stay sometimes, that you cannot press exactly where you have to go, and you can make a too shallow incision, which means uh, not good quality hair growth. The follicle will be not grow as we expect. Here, uh, I will speak about uh, depth control. For example, you can put a five millimeter blade on the device, but you wanna just go four millimeter for the incision. You can come to the LCD screen and give the order to go one millimeter less deep than what I planned. You can go with a five millimeter blade very precisely only four millimeter. So it's have a very precise sensor to control the depth. And here, this is a long uh, information, but this is about the force what we are using and the stroke. The force and stroke must be optimal to get this incision what we need. If, it's, is the, if the stroke is too much or if the power is too much than what we use, then this can happen. The bl uh, blood circulation damage. Angle control. F for the first time, we are able to see the possible angle control during the operation because this is many times asked from the patients at which direction will my hair grow? So we just say, okay, we are following your existing hairs or we are try to do in somewhere more flat to the scalp, somewhere more up. But here you can see exactly with the device on the LCD screen and on the tip of the device, you can organize the angle from 15 degree up to 90 degree. Incision counting, this is what we're doing now, and this will be what we're doing in the future. 
I mean, we don't need any assistance just for counting anymore. The device counts uh, very precisely. Also in his manual mode. Incision patterns, very popular, brick pattern, row pattern, side-by-side -side patterns. And all these, what you, what you use before, at the moment, you can use this also with the device because the design is, the design comes from the past. We check many operations, how we can design the device so comfortable that it's fastly adapted. Sagittal or coronal use is also possible. And it's will really reduce also the musculoskeletal pain because the linear motion will be done by the device and also the power from the motor. It's have ergonomical design. Previous usage habits were investigated. Sterilization, it's have uh, outer skin which can take off from the device and can be autoclavable easily with these buttons, so anytime you have a sterile device for the patient. Tips about adaptation period, it takes about two to four weeks, it's very easy. pictures. I want to give a special thanks to the German and Turkish engineer groups who worked on the device. Mr. Dieter Vonhoff, Mr. Matthias Hufnagel, Mr. Mahmoud Sadek Akush, Mr. Kemal Mashallah, and also Dr. Uh, Dr. Pierre Tesauro supports me about this project. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.